Hello there, my name is Ryan Sullivan, and on behalf of myself, I'd like to introduce you to a brand new podcast. It's called Geeks and Chucks. So what is this podcast all about? Well, it is a focus on four things. Video games, television, film, and sports. And maybe some a few other things that I might like to talk about, whether it's, you know personal experience or some other thing but my goals for this podcast at least is to try to get at least two episodes a month it might be possible but we'll have to see how things go as far as where you can find me um, I'm on Twitter and I'll explain that in the episode which is going to be about retired MLB stars from this past season and maybe an overview of the season overall. Um, for now, let's get to episode one. Retired MLB stars of 2018. Welcome to Geeks and Jocks, a podcast that focuses on video games, film, television, and sports. And now... For the person who is in charge of this podcast, here is Ryan Sullivan. Hello there, and this is Ryan Sullivan on behalf. This is episode one of a new brand new podcast. It's called Geeks and Jocks, and our focus for this episode is retired MLB stars of 2018. So last week, or close to last week, the MLB season finished up, and the playoffs are underway. The ALDS, as of this recording, is going to start very soon. Houston Astros against the Cleveland Indians, and then the New York Yankees face, facing off against the Boston Red Sox. So the NL already had their first games of the division. Uh, Colorado lost to the Milwaukee Brewers in extra innings, and the Los Angeles Dodgers dominated the Atlanta Braves 6 nothing in that game. The Brewer game was 3-2 in 10 innings. Mike Moustakis had the game-winning hit. And so as we look at 2018, there are a handful of players that are looking to end their careers. Some might come back, but if they aren't, we'll talk about them. And I'll start off with probably one of the most notable catchers of the 2000s, and that is Joe Maurer. So Maurer began his career in 2004, catcher for the Minnesota Twins. And within the next year, he started lighting it up. You know, he was one of those guys that he could give you that clutch hit. And he was a decent catcher. He had three batting titles, a handful of all-star selections. He was MVP in 2009. He was a very durable pit, uh, catcher. He was very durable, and for a long stretch of time, I mean, this guy f went through it all. And the last five years or so, he has converted to a first baseman. And so the, his final game, uh, which I think was Sunday, uh, they let him catch one final time. And with that, he ends his career with little over 2,000 hits, probably over 300 average, and a lot of accolades for the Minnesota Twins. The only thing he will not have is probably a World Series. And the unfortunate side of him, you know, of Joe Maurer, is that he has seen the playoffs only four times in his career. And three of those occasions were against the Yankees. And the Yankees have their number. They have the Twins' number. Uh, getting swept two straight years in a row. 
Um, and actually, not just that, um, even though Maurer wasn't on the roster for the playoffs, they lost nine in a row to the Yankees. Going all the way back to 04, then 09, 2010, and they had the misfortune last year facing the Yankees and losing their 10th straight last year. And they joined unfortunate history with the 86, and between 86 and 95, the Red Sox losing like 13 straight postseason games. And, you know, I mean, that that's the unfortunate side of the Minnesota Twins. And sad thing is, you know, Ron Gardenhire, he had much better winning seasons than Tom Kelly. And, you know, for guys like Maurer and, uh, you know, once he, he and Justin Morneau, they were considered, you know, one of the great duos for the Minnesota Twins. And rather unfortunate, they couldn't win a World Series or even get past the Division Series, or in the case of last year, at least for Maurer, the wild card. But more than likely, Maurer should... I think he should get in the Hall of Fame. I mean, you know, one of the great catchers, as I said, of the 2000s. And, you know, rather unfortunate to end his career on a whimper. So another another longtime batter, and he spent the last eight years with the Texas Rangers, and that is Adrian Beltre. So for Beltre, he started his career in 1998. He was a young 19-year-old for the Los Angeles Dodgers. And he spent a good amount of time with them until 2004. Spent a number of years with the Seattle Mariners. Spent a year with Boston. And then the last eight years, he was with the Rangers. And he had some really strong years with the Rangers. And that included leading, I'm not sure if it's the American League or the majors overall in hits, but he led with 199 hits. He got his 3,000 hit last year. Uh, just, this you, you can't say what, what needs to be said already. I mean, he is a legend in himself. He may not have the all-star selections like some or all these gold gloves and stuff. He was just a consistent player. And he had the fortune of being on some pretty good teams, especially when he joined the Rangers, making it to World Series his first year he joined. And unfortunately losing to the St. Louis Cardinals, but he was a leader. He was a guy that you could count on to get those wins. And more than likely, like much like Maurer, he should be finding himself in the Hall of Fame. Now these next two, it's, they're not going to make it. Maybe a ring of honor with some team. But the unfortunate side is, especially with this next one, it's sad that injuries hurt his career so much. And I'm going to go with David Wright the third baseman for the New York Mets. Now, I had the fortune of getting to see Wright when he was in double-A. And he was one of those young prospects that, you know, at one point was considered to be one of the guys that the Mets should be a leader and maybe be the reason that the team makes the playoffs every year, yada, yada, yada. And so mid-2004, he joined the Mets. And actually, he didn't have too bad of a rookie year. And the next year, and really from 2005 to 2010, he was one of the more prolific hitters for the Mets. He was capable of getting you over 300 average a year, averaged about 25 home runs, 95 to 105 RBIs. And... The thing that hurt David Wright was the fact that 
he had back issues and it was he didn't it wasn't noticeable when he was hurt throughout 2011 but he rebounded for the next two years and really it was when 2015 rolled along that the question was could he be able to play could he and he came back in time for the playoffs now he didn't do much in the playoffs but you know to have your team leader I mean says a lot I mean he could be the guy that rallies the troops and for that 2015 year I mean the Mets it was like a roller coaster of emotions seriously when you consider that Wilmer Flores he thought it was going to be traded. He really thought it was. And he, he was so upset. And the fans were giving a good ovation to him. But luckily the trade didn't happen. And, you know, all these guys overall, I mean, not just Flores. I mean, the Mets had probably one of the strongest comebacks for a season. And to be able to knock out, even like the Chicago Cubs, who were looked to be as the favorite to to get to the World Series and win it. They would win it in 2016. Um, to be able to knock them out and be able to show that the Mets were serious, although they would lose to the Kansas City Royals, their first World Series since 1985. Uh, but... Really, the last four years, probably a lot of hell for um, David Wright, and very sad. You know, you know, he leaves behind uh, 1,700 hits, about a little over 240 home runs, 960 plus RBIs. I mean, handful of All-Star selections, some Gold Gloves, and. Not much else you can really say. I mean, he'll be in a Ruts, the Mets ring of honor and be one of the better known Mets, especially for as infamous as they are, the lovable losers, you know, what have you. And, you know, he'd be one of the considered one of the great guys for the Mets. So another guy who ended his career was Victor Martinez. So he started his career in 2002. He started for the Cleveland Indians, but he didn't really gain any traction until 2004. And spending about eight years with the team, 02 through 09, getting traded to Boston for a couple of years, uh, then going to Detroit, and you know, he he had a decent career. He was a guy that could get you some heads. He he was capable of doing plenty of things, but overall, his final stats are on like twenty one twenty one hundred hits. Uh, his career average will be two ninety five, but Overall, I mean, I don't know what else really to say. He's one of those guys that I can't really say much on because I never really saw him play much compared to Wright, Beltre, and and Maurer. But with that aside, I mean, there's probably going to be some other guys that that will probably say, I'm done. It was nice to have a good career, and thank you for having me play all of those years. So in regards to the playoffs, um, I mean, this is an interesting year. Um, the AL uh, DS, it's, it's role reversal. I mean, instead of the Yankees facing Cleveland, it's they're facing Boston and Houston is facing Cleveland instead of Boston. So a little reversal from last year. But you know, for, really for the Yankees, it it was it's the first time since 2004 they're facing Boston. And unless 
unless I'm wrong, their game against Oakland, it was the first time since 2001. Talk about long breaks between facing certain teams in the playoffs. And you got to look at these power lineups, at least with Houston, Boston, and the Yankees. I mean, pretty obvious. You got Aaron Judge, Giancarlo Stanton for the Yankees, J.D. Martinez, Mookie Betts for Boston, George Springer, and Jose Altuve. Not much of a power hitter, but, you know, he was a guy that could get you some big hits for Houston. The pitching staffs for these guys, I mean, Cleveland, unbelievable. I mean, when you consider Carrasco, Kluber, Bauer, I mean, four pitchers with 200-plus strikeouts. All four start, the four starters for, for Cleveland. And then when you consider pending any health issues, you got... Rick Porcello, David Price, Aaron Sale. No, no, Chris Sale. Chris Sale. Sorry. I'm thinking of some other pitcher for Boston. Uh, Chris Sale. And then some of the old war horses for the Yankees, like CeCe Sabathia, though whether he comes back from suspension before the series ends, I would think so, but... You know, Luis Severino, Jay Happ. I mean, overall, the AL, you don't know what's going to happen. So, with that in mind, let's jump to the NL. Now, the Los Angeles Dodgers, they snuck up. They were struggling at points during the season, but they recovered and won their division, you know, beating the Colorado Rockies. And they'll have a tough time getting back into the World Series. I mean, Milwaukee is pretty dangerous, especially with that Yelich guy, who I believe was like only like one or two home runs and RBIs from winning the Triple Crown. So what a Triple Crown is, best batting average, best leading in home, home runs, and leading in runs batted it in. Now, they got some good veterans for Milwaukee, and they could probably face the best of the majors, but it's going to be tough if they have to face the Dodgers because they got some good pitching, they got some strong young batters. When you consider, you know, guys like Cody Bellinger, for example, a guy that can get 30 home runs, and when the pitching, which, although not in form, I mean, Clayton Kershaw could give the Dodgers the huge benefit. So, I really look at the Dodgers going back into the World Series. I really do. Um, I don't think Atlanta has enough, even though they got some decent pitching and some good young players. It's, it's going to be a while. I think if it's anything like those early 90s Braves teams, I mean... They'll have some experience, and hopefully they learn from that experience if they do wind up getting eliminated to figure out their flaws and fix them and be able to be big contenders for at least a good three to five years and hopefully win their world first World Series since 1995. And... I mean, I can't really say much on Colorado. I mean, they have a great lineup for batters. When you consider Charlie Blackman, Nolan Arnato, Trevor Story, I mean, they got guys that can hit and hit for power. When you consider the top two for home runs for the NL, it was Arnato at 37 and Story at 36. I mean, they could have the chance to rebound against Milwaukee, but... It's going to be tough. Going to be really tough. Now, who do I think could reach the World Series for the AL? I mean, it could be any of them. I mean, Houston still has their core group of uh, pitchers, that core group of batters. Boston, I think with 
having J.D. Martinez, I mean, they could be more of a bigger threat than any of the teams realize. Really, most of that core Yankee group is back. It's just a matter of, like, can they get hits beyond home runs? And can the pitching staff go beyond five, six innings? Can the bullpen not be overused? That will be the big question for the Yankees. And the unfortunate side for Cleveland is, yes, they do have some power. And their starting pitchers are about as elite as you can get for a major league team. But can the bullpen help? And can those batters get those clutch hits? I don't know. But overall, I mean, it could be any of them. And more than likely for the NL, as I said. I see the Dodgers getting back. Now, whether they win a World Series or not, that's another question, since they haven't won one since 1988. But in regards to that, um, it's 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 going to be tough. It's, that's all I'm going to say. So, where can you find me? Well, I'll leave some links to where I am. I am on YouTube. I run a gaming channel. It's more focused on older games from NES, Super NES, Sega Genesis, PlayStation. I'm on Twitter. Um, I am trying to work on creating a Patreon. And when I get to that, I'll leave some links for you guys. And I hope to continue this podcast and hope to find, you know, an a good audience that is able to focus on, you know, the geeky side and the jock side as well. And hopefully this is something I can do for a very long time. And I hope you enjoy this episode, which is has been about retired MLB stars and the playoffs. So... Hope you all enjoyed this podcast and have yourself a nice day. This is the end of episode one of a podcast called Geeks and Jocks.